according to Jewish tradition, when the Torah was given at Mount Sinai, it was not completely written down. There was an additional component to the written Torah, what is called the Torah Sheba Peh. The Torah Sheba Al Peh came into being when Moshe Rabbeinu heard the commandments, guidelines, and rules directly from Hashem. He taught them to his student Yehoshua. Yehoshua taught them to the Zakanim. The Zakanim were the elders and the leaders of Israel in the days before kings ruled the people. The elders passed the Torah Sheba Al Peh on to the Nevi'im. The Nevi'im were the prophets who guided Israel during the time when kings ruled the people. The Nevi'im remembered and taught the spoken Torah to Israel during the time of the first Beit HaMikdash and also after its destruction. The prophets passed the Torah Sheba Al Peh on to the Anshei Knesset Agdola, the men of the Great Assembly, a group of 120 sages who led the Jewish people when they returned to the land of Israel from their exile in Babylon. After the Anshei Knesset Agdola, the task of teaching and leading the Jewish people moved to the Zugot. Zugot means pairs. In those days, there were always two great teachers who guided the Torah sages and led the people. The gathering of these Torah sages was called the Sanhedrin. The first leader of the Sanhedrin was called the Nasi, which means high up or president. He was something like a king. The second leader was called the Av Bet Din, which means head of the court of law. His job was to help the sages during their discussions and make sure that proper decisions were reached. Over the next 250 years, there were five Zugot who led the Jewish people. The sages believed that everybody's Torah thoughts and opinions were important to remember and understand. So, the students of Hillel and Shammai remembered all the words of all the sages, even when there was an argument. They also made new rules to protect the Torah. Over time, the Torah Sheba Al Peh grew and grew. Sadly, the second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed and the Jewish people suffered under Roman rule. That did not stop the sages from their holy work. They continued teaching Torah laws, explaining the mitzvot, thinking and talking and arguing about how Hashem's will should be done. The sages in the days after the Zugot are called Tanaim. The Tanaim always felt that they were just repeating the Torah Sheba Al Peh. The period of the Tanaim lasted for five generations. Over time, Torah Sheba Al Peh grew very large. People began to have trouble remembering everything. Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who was one of the presidents from the family of Hillel, knew what to do. He gathered the teachings of the Tanaim and made them into small bits of Torah. These bits are called Mishnayot. Each bit is called a Mishnah. The word Mishnah comes from the Hebrew word Shana, which means repeat. Mishnayot were repeated over and over until they were remembered very well. The whole collection of bits is called the Mishnah. At the same time that Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi was collecting and arranging the Mishnah, other sages were collecting bits of Torah Sheba Al Peh on their own. These bits are called beraitot. A single bit is called a beraita. In Aramaic, the word bera means outside. Since Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi did not put these bits into the Mishnah, they are called beraitot, which means outsiders. The beraitot are outside the Mishnah. The Mishnah of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi was accepted by everyone. All of the sages studied it. The Mishnah was finished, so no one was allowed to make any changes to it. When Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi composed the Mishnah, he divided the Mishnayot into groups. There are six groups. The groups are called Sidarim, which means orders in Hebrew. A single group is called a Seder. The groups are called Sidarim because the Mishnayot in each group follow one another in a logical order. Sometimes, instead of saying the Mishnah, we say the Shisha Sidarim, meaning the six orders. We also say the Shas for short. Here are the Sidarim of the Mishnah. Sarayim. 
This means seeds in Hebrew. These Mishnayot are not just about seeds. They explain the Torah laws about growing food in the land of Israel and in other places. Since we say blessings on the food we grow, the laws of the blessings and other prayers are in Seder Zeraim too. Moed. This means times. These Mishnayot talk about the laws of Shabbat, holidays, and fast days. Nashim. This means women. These Mishnayot talk about the laws of marriage and divorce. Nezikin. This means damages. These Mishnayot talk about the laws of money and other valuable things that belong to a person. Kedoshim. This means holy things. These Mishnayot talk about the sacrifices offered in the Beit HaMikdash. The laws of keeping kosher are also found in this Seder. Taharot. This means pure things. These Mishnayot talk about how to become spiritually clean and pure. Back when we had a Beit HaMikdash, it was important to be spiritually clean and pure so we could go there. The laws of how to wash your hands before you eat bread are also found there. Each of the six sedarim is made up of units called masechtot. Each one of these units is called a masechet. Originally, the word masechet meant woven in Hebrew. The units are called masechtot because the mishnayot in each masechet are connected and attached to each other like threads in a piece of cloth. Each masechet has a subject that it teaches. A masechet is made up of chapters called parakim in Hebrew. One chapter is called a perek. A perek is made up of mishnayot. Each masechet has a name. This name is connected to the subject the masechet talks about. Each perek has a name too. The name of a perek is not like the name of a masechet. The name of a perek is made out of the first words of the perek. Let's see how this works. Let's look at Seder Zeraim, the first order of the Mishnah. The first Masechet in Zeraim is called Brachot, which means blessings. This Masechet talks about the blessings and prayers we say every day. The first parak of Masechet Brachot is called Perak Me'ematai. Now, the word Me'ematai means from when. This might sound like a strange name for a chapter, but it's not really so strange. The chapter is called Me'ematai, because it begins with the word me'ematai. The Mishnah begins with the question, from when does a person read the Shema in the evening? 